don't do it like that. Uh, in fact, if you're assembling an engine for the first time, don't be watch, don't watch this. <laughs> um, Done the maths. Our desired oil clearance is 0 0.04 of a millimeter. Our actual oil clearance is 0 0.06, 0 0.55, that's vertical, horizontal, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 is how we'll do it. So 0 0.06, 0 0.055, 0 0.055, 0 0.06, 0 0.050, which is my tightest. 0 0.060, 0 0.055, 0 0.055, 0 0.055, 0 0.060, 0 0.060, the worst, number 6, 0 0.070, and then horizontally, 0 0.060. Zero. Is that enough to make a knock? I don't know, but it's certainly in a spec. I'll measure those bearings now, I'll measure one of them at least, and see how thick the bearing is compared to what the um, service manual says, but what we have is undersized um, crank with uh, probably stock bearings in it, which means too much clearance. And there's, there is excessive wear when you look closely at those, that they are worn. Let's just say I'm glad I've pulled it out voluntarily. Uh, it probably would have lasted quite a while, but it might not have. But I've got more investigation to go, it's not conclusive, but those, those clearances are too big. And um, it means I'll most likely need to use one of the other cranks out of one of those other engines. Um, I may be able to use this if I can get the right size bearings, but if I've got a bigger crank, I'll use it because it, it is stronger and it's got more usability later. If it does get scored or something, I, I can remachine it. This here, I don't think you can take anything off it. Or if you can, that's not much. Okay, so we've checked the clearances, they're too big. The standard bearing should be 1.5 to 1.503 millimeters thick. We've got 1.5, so they're slightly worn standard, as you can see they're worn anyway. Um, they're certainly not big enough for the size crank that they've gone on, so they should never have gone in to this engine because that has not worn that much. The wrong, the wrong bearings have been installed in this engine. They needed to be heavier ones to um, take out the slack where that crank has been ground. So I've already done the mains on the crank and to measure the mains on the block we're going to put the girdle back in and then measure that. Um, at least that's only one assembly to put together. So just like the other ones we need to make sure everything's clean so we can talk this up the spec properly. I haven't actually inspected under these bearings either so one thing I am noticing is here there's some unusual marks here. Now and one there. I don't know if they're supposed to be there. Let's just start our investigation at number one. That all looks alright to me. Nothing unusual there. I'll lay these out in order. That one doesn't look too bad. So we're just going to rinse and repeat this process for all seven. So I've cleaned out the block, removed any oil or debris, replaced these bearings back in where they went. Same bearings going in the same holes. Make sure you don't have any sort of of the cloth left behind because that'll affect your measurements. It may not affect mine with the micrometer. But if you're using the right tools, because you shouldn't be using a micrometer for this, I'm just investigating. Do you mean vernier calipers? Yes, I mean vernier calipers. You should be using a micrometer. Not what I'm using. Wow, there's some shitty casting here. It's really bad. Do you see this here? Can you actually see that? Get in closer. See that there? That's just asking to break free. 
and then get pulled into a bearing. A hole the casting looks pretty decent, but look just at the end there, it's terrible. Now, let's take, uh, I'm going to remove all the pistons because I'm going to take that over the workbench to clean it. Alright, we'll do the same with the girdle. There won't be any of the fibre that comes off the rags if it goes in there. It's going to affect your measurement if you're assembling an engine. Don't do it like that. Uh, in fact, if you're assembling an engine for the first time, don't be watch, don't watch this. <laughs> um, there are some very good YouTube how to's assemble engines out there. I can't remember the name, and uh, I will probably put a put a link in down below or something or on the screen. I might use a card which will come up the top of the screen. I think top left, which would be there. Yeah, all we're going to do here is clear these and also in this surface here because this is the mating surface. If that's got debris in it, then it's going to not allow us to sit and talk down properly. Okay, put our nice cleaned bearings back in. Put a girdle back in. And then swap them around. That feels like it might be a long one. Oh, you can see on the, yeah, the casting right there, that's high, that's high, that's high. Now we're going to go to the proper torque sequence. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, as per the service manual. Um, it is 42, 48 to 52 newton meters. This is 20 something, so because I like to do it in stages. It's not much, but it wasn't much coming off either, so. so just ensure I've got a nice even base to start with. Now the reason I'm working on this side of the block instead of that side of the block is this is the way the picture was in the service manual. And it's just easier to remember the sequence if you're standing on the same side as what the picture is. So now we're going to 48. 52 newton meters. 46 to 52. 46 to 52. I've got a 47.5 here, so I'm just gonna go smidge and pass that. Anyway, that's all good. Let's go again. There's something I like to do when you got multiple bolts in a pattern like that, is do it twice because as the pressure goes down here and here, it's going should relieve the pressure slightly here. Now it might not be enough to warrant doing it again, but I do it. Nope. So I always just go over them all a second time, just to make sure. But also make sure I don't miss anything. But mainly, as the stress and pressure is moved from one bolt to the next, I don't want one being under torque because of it. Done up, now we need the vernies. Now, once again, you should probably measure these. You do, you should measure these either side of the, um, the oil groove. And I may do that, I may not. I'm just gonna measure one and have a look and see roughly where we're at. Once again, where the joint is, you can't measure that. Aha, that wasn't zeroed. Both those numbers are irrelevant. That's a better number. We'll pretend what I just did didn't happen. 55 neat. 54.98. So let's very quickly have a look at approximately where we're at. It's the same mass as before. The journal. This is the front of the engine. Disregard the numbers. The front. 54.94, 54.94, 54.94, and 54.94. So it was round. That's 55 neat. So that's, uh, what's that, 0 0.06? Yeah. Sounds about right, doesn't it? Crankshaft. Journal main oil bearing clearance 0 
um, is the limit a target is 0 0.02 to 0 0.047 so let's have a look at the horizontal one which is also 59.94 minus 54.98 0 0.04 now that would make sense because I rung a mate who knows the history of the engine, um, knows a bit more about the history of the engine, I know plenty about it, I put it in, um, or helped to put it in. As far as, because it was freshened up before it went in the car, um, and he said today that they, not he, that they who had done it had only done the mains. Based on one, I've got a sample of one, I've got to check all the rest. Um, but not for the rods, which makes sense for what he said because he said that they didn't change the rod bearings, is what had happened. That all falls into place. I'm going to have to measure the rest to be sure, but um, I'll do that now and I'll show you the results. Um, and what that gives me is uh, more indication that it probably wasn't the pistons because I don't think that all gets enough to create a knock. It may be. I don't think so. But they certainly were damaged, are damaged, and they certainly would not have lasted too long with that much power. With that bigger clearance, they're going to get ripped open pretty quickly. And you can see there is damage on some of them. In fact, I'll show you some of the damage now. So that's got uh, a piece missing out of it there, a small piece. So small piece missing there out of the face very small uneven wear uneven wear again large piece missing out of the face there very uneven wear on the bottom one and more damage in the face come over here with the lights a bit better more damage in the face just there the edge of that shadow And that repeats itself. There's a couple more bits of damaged faces. There's uneven wear all through it. There's uneven loading on the bearing, obviously. Because uh, there's just too much play, there's too much slop, so it's, it's moving around. I don't know why I'm doing that. But the, yeah, they're moving around on the crank because there's too much space and they're getting damaged because of that. Um, and the engine would not have lasted, I don't think, like that for very long. It might last another couple of events, several even, but it was going to go. Those bearings would get chewed out. It may have only lasted the next drive, who knows. Someone will know. Tell me, if you know how long that would last, let me know. And tell me I haven't wasted my time pulling it for that. But that's not what I pulled it for. I pulled it for the knock, and I don't think that can generate that knock. And if you're a mechanic or an RB expert, can that bearing clearance make that knock? I don't seem to think so. But that's just based on logic, not, not, a, not actual experience with RBs. Yeah, so the crank is crank is ground, it's undersized, so I need to inspect the cranks in the other two blocks to see if they're any better. If they're better, I'll have to use one of them. 